I am going to show you how to configure Cisco routers for OSPF routing. So first of all, um, OSPF requires devices. We have two routers, the Portland router and the Seattle router. And you can see that they are connected to each other. The Portland router also has an additional interface that's connected to a switch. And there are multiple networks here. So I'm gonna configure the Portland router first and then the Seattle router. So I have a console cable to the Portland router. I press enter, I get into user mode. I type in enable to get into privilege mode. And from here I can type show IP route to show my routing table. I can see that I'm directly connected to two different subnets. So it's time to configure the OSPF routing. So I do comp T to get into configuration terminal mode. From here, I can configure the router with the router OSPF, and then I sell, tell it a process number. So usually it's process one, and then I need to tell it the networks I'm connected to. It uses this to find all the networks I have and to add them to its tables. OSPF is a link state routing protocol, and whenever things are added, it instantly sends everything, sends information to all the rest of the devices in the OSPF um, area, and then they calculate out the fastest route using the open shortest path first, or the shortest path first uh, algorithm. Okay, so my networks are 172.16.0.0 slash 24, I need to give it a wildcard mask, which is 0.0.0.255. It's basically the not of the subnet mask. Um, also, you can look at it as the number of bits left after you take 32 and use 24 of them for the subnet portion. We have eight bits left. If the last eight bits are all a one value and you convert it to decimal, then you get a 255 for those last octet here. Next, I need to tell the area. So I'll do area one. I just need to make sure that everything in my network is the same area. So network 192.168.0.0 with a wildcard of 0 0.0.0.3 because 30 means there are two bits for the host, 32 minus 30 is two, and if they are both one values, then that becomes three, it's area one as well. And then I can exit out of here, and I'm done with this router. Now I'm going to switch over to the other router. I'm moving my constant cable from the Portland router to the Seattle router, and press enter a few times on my putty terminal. And then I can go from user mode into privilege mode. I can type in my routing table or show my routing table or the show IP route command. I can see once again, I am still not getting anything from any routing protocols. I am directly connected to one network. And I'm going to add that network to my OSPF configuration. So I do conf T for configuration terminal. And then from here, I do router OSPF, and I give it a process number. It doesn't matter what the process number is. It's just what you use when you want to go back in and make some changes later. Okay. So now that I'm in here, I tell it the network I'm connected to, or basically use that to figure out which interfaces to add to the OSPF. So you do network and 192.168.0.0. And give it a mask of 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3. Once again, 32 minus 30 is 2, which gives me 2 bits. And 2 bits, a 1 and 1, is equal to the decimal value of 3. And that's going to be area 1 as well. So then I just exit out of this. And exit out of here. And I'm back to my right here privilege mode and I can look at the routing table with the show IP route command. 
I can see that I have now received an extra route with the O method. O maps up here as OSPF. So O is OSPF. And I have got access to the 172.16.0.0 slash 24 subnet. And I got that from my fast ethernet 01. And this is the IP address I use to communicate with it. So if I want to ping something on that network, I can ping 172.16.0.1. It pings across and has a 100% success rate because that's how it's, that works. Anyway, this is how you configure routers for OSPF routing.